Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. It's Dr. Sarah and Alicia here, and today we are talking about a topic that nobody really wants to talk about, yet it affects a huge amount of us. Did you know that between 60 to 80 percent of the population has been exposed to the herpes virus? So let's not be quiet about it. Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. We are doctors Sarah and Alicia, maternity physicians and moms who have been through it all. We want to empower you with knowledge so you can have the best pregnancy, birth, and postpartum experience you can. She Found Health and She Found Motherhood is meant for general medical information only. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This information does not apply to every situation. If you have questions or if you've received different advice, please contact your healthcare provider. Always seek the advice of your physician or another qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. The views expressed by She Found Health and She Found Motherhood and our guests are not representative of any of the institutions with which we are affiliated. Some of our podcast episodes are sponsored so that we can keep getting great info out there to you, our listeners. We only partner with companies that we truly believe in. Some of our links and suggestions may be affiliates, and we would appreciate you using them to help fund this important work. Now let's get to it. So what is herpes? Well, generally, it's known as a sexually transmitted disease which can be caused by either the virus HSV-1 or HSV-2. Genital herpes is generally contained to the area around the genitals, vulva, vagina, penis, scrotum, and anal rectal area, and it's typically caused by the virus HSV-2. But it can be transmitted to other areas of the body and vice versa. It is not discriminating. So HSV-1 can also occur on the genitalia, and HSV-2 can also occur on what we call the oral mucosa. So the lips, the around the mouth, and even around the nose. The viruses that cause herpes, so be it on a finger, lips, vulva, even nipple or penis, are all caused by the same virus. So it is not always transmitted in a sexual way. Think about your grandmother with a cold sore kissing your two-year-old. And then two to 10 days later, your child gets their first outbreak. Yes, cold sores are caused by the herpes virus as well. So some people who are exposed to the herpes virus will never actually get an outbreak, but we can test their blood to see that they have been exposed in the past because we make immunoglobulins against that virus just like we make them against any other virus. Chickenpox, measles, rhinovirus, COVID, COVID, you name it. Other people get outbreaks very frequently and it can significantly impact mm-hmm. the quality of their life. Mm-hmm. In some cases, it can be very dangerous and life-threatening. These instances are generally when you're severely immunocompromised, such as being exposed as a newborn baby, or when you're undergoing chemotherapy, for example. So the herpes virus can be transmitted by skin-to-skin contact. And even if you have an outbreak previously but currently have no legion, lesions, you're able to still pass it on. Less likely, but it's still a possibility. Outbreaks often will occur when your immune system is weakened, such as times of stress, increased sun exposure, illness, or pregnancy or postpartum. Mm -hmm. So symptoms that are consistent with a herpes outbreak include a tingling or burning where you've previously had lesions, an ulceration or blisters appearing after the tingling or burning, and these lesions lasting generally less than 10 days. Depending on the location... These lesions can make urination, defecation, intercourse, etc. quite painful. And when we see these on kids who are having their first outbreak around their oral Mm -hmm. area, oftentimes the entire inside of their mouth can be ulcerated and it can be really hard for them to eat and stay hydrated. So certainly if you're noticing this in a child Mm -hmm. and they're just not eating well, then make sure you have them seen. Yeah. And the other thing we didn't mention is first outbreaks are often associated with systemic feeling unwell. So fever, sometimes you get quite swollen lymph nodes, and that's just your immune system's massive reaction to a new virus. So what do we do about it? So the first thing is confirming with what we're dealing with. So if there's an open lesion, we can swab this and confirm that it is actually an active herpes outbreak. This doesn't always help us at the time, but can confirm that you've been exposed to herpes so we can plan for future outbreaks. If the swab doesn't confirm it or the lesion is healed by the time you've seen your care provider, we can also do a blood test to see if you have been exposed either very recently or exposed in the past. Now, keep in mind, many of us have been exposed and will never have an outbreak. So you would need to have a history of lesions which are consistent with a herpes outbreak and the positive blood test. Yeah. And 
I really want to encourage you to not go to your provider and ask for a blood test right away unless, like Alicia said, you specifically have had a recent lesion. And if you're pregnant, I mean, if you just want to know if you've been exposed to herpes, you, you probably have, right? I've never had a cold sore, but I probably would test positive. And so it's not something we routinely screen for. And the other crazy thing is that your partner may never have had an outbreak, but sometimes if they've been exposed and they carry the virus, they can still pass it on. So like Alicia said, it's so prevalent. It is not something to be ashamed of. Everyone knows the best gifts are the ones that you buy for yourself. But how can you get that exciting gift opening surprise factor while also getting yourself exactly what you need? With a nesting box, of course. A pregnancy-themed subscription box filled with locally crafted, ethically sourced goodies handpicked by Drs. Sarah and Alicia to support you in whatever trimester of pregnancy you're in. From soothing soaks and balms for those first trimester aches and nausea to newborn products for when your baby arrives, we have you or the pregnant person in your life covered. Go to www.shefoundhealth.ca backslash the-nesting-box or click the link below. So. Let's talk about treatment. Treatment includes using what we call antiviral medications. These can be utilized in two different ways. The first way you can use it is as you need it. Depending on how frequently you get an outbreak, you may decide to treat your outbreaks when you feel them coming on. So oftentimes what we would recommend is that as soon as you feel that tingling and pinpricking sensation, that you would start the medication. These regimes are usually one to three days of medication at the first sign of an outbreak. If your outbreaks occur a couple of times a year or less, you're probably happy with this plan. The other way that you can use them is preventatively. That means if you have frequent outbreaks or you really don't want to get another outbreak, you may decide to take a daily medication. This will help to prevent, but not guarantee, that outbreaks occur less frequently. This method can also help in preventing the spread of herpes to others as your viral shedding is decreased. So just like we discussed how people can carry the virus, and maybe not necessarily have lesions, but still spread it, if they're taking this preventatively, then the likelihood of spreading it is even lower. And now antiviral medications are very safe and very well tolerated. And in terms of pregnancy-specific information, this is kind of a useful general podcast, but it's also in terms of for pregnancy. So it's, as we said, it's a bit more common to get outbreaks during pregnancy. So if you had outbreaks 10 years ago um, and you haven't had any since, you might get it in pregnancy, you might not, and we don't really know. But one thing that we really want to be cautious about, and we're a little bit overcautious probably, mm -hmm. but we like to keep our newborns safe, is we don't want you transmitting this to your newborn at birth. So one of the things that we recommend to all people who have a history of an active herpes lesion at some point in the past is starting on antivirals around 36 weeks mm -hmm. of pregnancy mm -hmm. to help prevent you getting an active lesion around delivery. The other thing is if you do have an active lesion around delivery, the recommendation is to have a cesarean section. Again, that's to avoid exposing your baby to that virus and the risk of them getting a bad, bad, bad newborn infection. Mm -hmm. Again, the risk is quite low, but we're in pregnancy and newborn care, we're always overly cautious. Mm -hmm. So certainly if you have a history of herpes outbreaks, you've never had an outbreak in pregnancy, and you don't want to take it, have a good discussion with your care provider around that, what that could mean for you. And the same thing is if you have an active herpes outbreak during delivery and you really, really, really don't want a cesarean section, then have a good discussion with your care provider about the risks and benefits of that to you and, more importantly, to your newborn. Mm -hmm. So the other thing we talk about is prevention. And this is a really important piece of it. However, it also is very hard. As we said, there's been so many people in our population that have been infected and maybe get super rare outbreaks, or maybe they don't even get any. So generally, these are recommendations. Take them as you want to. So generally, no direct skin-to-skin -skin contact with people who have a lesion. So in the area of infection, you can hold your newborn or you can hold their hand, but you don't want to be touching their penis or their vulva, right? This can be a little bit challenging in some postpartum people who actually get herpes outbreaks on their nipples. So mm -hmm. it's pretty few and far between. But for those people, I actually recommend them taking an antiviral during breastfeeding to help reduce the risk of getting an active lesion or shedding virus for their newborn. Yeah, you're so sleep revived postpartum, but it's, you're, you're at high risk. Of and it's your most immunocompromised yeah, time of totally. pregnancy, right? Number two is use a condom if you or your partner has an active lesion. 
And if you're pregnant, you may just want to take the safety to the next level. And so if even if your partner has had an active lesion but doesn't currently, you still may want to use a condom during pregnancy for sexual intercourse just to help be a little bit more cautious because your immune system is down a bit. You really want to make sure you have good communications with your sexual partners and ask them if they've had a history of any sexually transmitted diseases in the past and if they have any currently active sexually transmitted diseases. Don't judge them for it. Just like they shouldn't judge you, just ask and be open. If you're having sex with somebody, this is something you should be able to talk about. Mm -hmm. Both are very intimate things. Also, making sure that you're open about if you have any concerns around having active or non-active herpes infections. Go into your relationships, eyes wide open, and then you can talk about it. And then you'll, if you can talk about this, you can talk about most things, frankly. Again, if you're pregnant, make sure you tell your care provider if you've ever had a herpes outbreak or if your partner has had them or has them regularly. Getting a recurrence in pregnancy isn't a big deal. It's annoying. It's frustrating. We can treat it with the antivirals. But getting your first outbreak yeah. ever in pregnancy can be harmful to your baby. So we generally really don't want your baby exposed to an active herpes lesion, whether it's your first lesion or your 28th lesion. So like we said before, we would advise you to have a cesarean section if you had active vaginal vulvar lesions during delivery. But like we also said, we can take that preventative medication during the end of your pregnancy to help reduce the risk of getting an outbreak close to your due date. If you do get your first ever herpes infections during pregnancy, please, please, please talk to your care provider and tell them this because we actually monitor your pregnancy differently. So let's recap. Herpes is incredibly common and nothing to be ashamed about. That's the number one takeaway from this podcast. Number two is that we can often, but not always, confirm your diagnosis by swab and or blood test. We can treat it either when you get outbreaks or by taking daily medication to help prevent outbreaks. Communicate with your partner about herpes. That's another really important one, especially in pregnancy. If you have herpes, do your best not to spread it. And if you're pregnant, let your care provider know if you have any history of herpes or your partner does. Well, we hope that that was informative. And again, nothing to be ashamed about. Mm -hmm. 80% of us have been exposed to it in the past. So if anybody gives you flack, you just send them to see us. Amen. Thanks for listening. Make sure to check out our website at www.shefoundhealth.ca and to sign up for our community for weekly bump blasts. Make sure to check us out on Instagram or Facebook at she.found.motherhood and head on over to your favorite podcast app and leave a review and a five-star rating. If you enjoyed this podcast, take a pic of yourself listening to it and share it on social. Make sure to tag us on it so we know to keep making them.